So uh, it's better if I open my Mac at this. So hello, everyone. This is uh, my name is Jérôme Laban. I'm the uh, CTO of the UNO platform. Uh, I'm uh, going to be uh, doing a free flow session. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. It's, uh, it's new for, for me about doing all those things with, uh, <laughs> with the sound uh, and, uh, and, and mastering OBS. So uh, it's going to get better <laughs> after a while. Uh, sorry about that. So uh, my name is Jérôme Laban. I'm the CTO of the UNO platform. And this session is going to be a free, fl free flow session about uh, the UNO platform, .NET 5, and WinUI 3. Uh, WinUI 3 Preview 3, so a little bit of this. And uh, we're going to be talking about all of this. And if you have any questions during the uh, during the 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 session, please uh, let let us know. Um, so uh, some people are available in the in the um, uh, some people are available as part of this of this session as well and can answer the, some questions. So if uh, you have questions and I don't have the answer, uh, some people can answer that as well uh, and take part of that conversation. Um, so let's begin. Uh, so about the agenda, we're going to be talking about uh, .NET 5, a bit of Android 11, uh, which we added recently. Uh, WinUI 3, uh, Win, WinUI 3 Preview 3 and uh, WinUI 2.5 with uh, some of the features that we added recently. Uh, features in 3.2, uh, 3.3 3, 3, uh, with uh, some of the bit of a drag and drop and key up and key down and items repeater. So that's the, the features that we added recently in, uh, in .NET 5. I may not be go into the details of all those, but I'm going to be talking about, about all that. Uh, and some and, and a bit of infragistics controls um, for uh, the UNO platform. Um, some of those have been, uh, have been added recently in, uh, uh, in the, uh, the WinUI, uh, and they added WinUI support uh, for that recently. So uh, that's uh, going to be a, a bit of... Uh, uh, showing up of, of features for that. So, <clears throat> what is the Uno platform? Uh, so that's the uh, one of the the interesting part uh, for that is uh, for the Uno platform is about doing some XAML and C sharp across uh, platforms, and uh, to show that uh, you know to to make sure that when you're developing for the Uno platform to when you were developing across platforms that you can target uh, only one language and uh, one UI framework. Um, so with all this, you can target uh, the, the WinUI framework. It's the XAML that we use. Uh, the, the XAML that we use is the one that uh, Microsoft is using for uh, WinUI, which is a bit different from uh, WPF and other XAML flavors. Uh, but it's uh, what Microsoft is targeting uh, um, you know, going forward. Um, now, uh, we're we're providing access to we're providing uh, implementation of the WinUI platforms uh, for the other platforms. So we're talking about uh, the web using WebAssembly um, and macOS iOS uh, using Xamarin, uh, and then same thing for Android using Xamarin. And we're also providing uh, the implementation for uh, for Linux and uh, and uh, Windows Seven uh, through the use of Skia and Skia Sharp. So it's all about making sure that you have one single code base and you can reuse that across platform. And best of all, all this is uh, open source and free to use. So you can go in uh, to our repo and just download it and, uh, uh, or uh, use Visual Studio and or are getting started on, uh, on, our, uh, on our website and just start and, and use that directly. So there's no anything to pay to, to start uh, using Uno. Um, so the way we're doing all this and you know when we're developing some XAML is uh, making sure that we uh, when, when you're creating your application and you have a text block to say you're displaying something on the screen, where does that go what that does uh, when does that go when you're uh, creating your text block on the screen? Well, all those are are uh, we're providing uh, implicit mapping. So when you're creating a text block, it goes over to uh, uh, a UI label, a text viewer, an HTML paragraph, or di drawn directly on the canvas uh, when you're going to uh, when you're going to Skia, and we're also providing as part of WinUI a set of implementation for uh, common platform APIs that are provided by uh, what what is called WinRT. So all the non UI APIs. And for those APIs, you can say, so let's say if you want to store something, uh, you know, let's say you have a login screen and you want to, to save that login screen and go to uh, the, those, uh, those settings and, and, and um, store those settings, you don't have to learn all those APIs that are available on all, on all those platforms. You just use the setting storage API that's available in, in, um, in, in uh, WinRT. 
and it will be mapped automatically to an S user default share preferences or uh, indexedb or .NET 5 for, for that matter. So that how, that's how we, we're mapping this. So during, uh, going through the demos, you're going to be uh, seeing all those um, and, uh, and map that properly. Um, so another thing that we've, uh, we've been doing, and, and that's, uh, that's one of uh, the, the uh, amazing things about, about uh, taking part of, of the .NET ecosystem is that um, we've been working really hard to make sure that uh, we're adding .NET, uh, .NET 5 supports to do our existing targets. And what I'm going to be showing you uh, on, as part of the demos is um, the, uh, the support for uh, the, the current support of that of .NET for Uno is using for WebAssembly uh, the current Mono uh, Mono in implementation, so Mono six uh, something, which provide access to um, uh, to some of the features that .NET are providing, but not the same thing as .NET five, and uh, uh, and we're adding that support with work and uh, working with the the uh, .NET team and uh, integrating that with what WebAssembly is providing at this point. So I'm going to be showing you later on in the demo how we can go and uh, upgrade that uh, the, the project that we are currently supporting over to .NET 5. And that, uh, that support is providing quite a few benefits, like the fact that uh, when um, we're looking at the performance aspects of that, uh, you know, in some cases, it's divided by two, uh, and uh, and and the in the, the the trust that you can see here is that uh, because we're providing .NET five support, we're also providing AOT support with this uh, with WebAssembly, and uh, it gives dramatic improvements in terms of performance. So that's uh, that's pretty amazing to see. Um, so. Let's dive into demos. So if you have any questions, uh, I'm going to be showing a few things about how we use Uno and how to be developing for Uno. Um, and uh, if uh, you have a question, I can jump to a specific demo and uh, and uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to be closing that one because it was a, a test. So uh, basically, if you want to develop with Uno, you just uh, go over to uh, the... Um, the extensions and when you manage extensions, you can search for Uno and it will give you in the search, the Uno platform solution templates. And those will give you two templates. So when you create a project, uh, you can go and have the cross platform, Uno cross platform app, uh, Uno template. So it basically you do a Uno uh, application like this, and then it will provide you access to uh, those two templates. So I'm just going to go and uh, create a new uh, cross platform Uno app. So while that builds, basically we're providing all the platforms at once. Um, it's and we're, we're talking all platforms, so we're talking quite a few of them. Uh, we have so uh, a few heads for uh, Android, iOS, Mac OS, you get GTK for Linux, and uh, it also works with uh, Windows 7. Uh, Tizen, so if you have a new Tizen watch or something like that, you can, uh, or fridge or toaster, you can uh, go and make your app application run on those targets. Uh, same thing for WPF, so this is for running also on uh, Windows 7, that's uh, another type of head that we're providing. Then there's the uh, UWP application, so that's the if you want to run on Windows 10 and up, uh, it's something that you can use and run this application. And there's also the WebAssembly head, which is, which provide access to running your application, so your WinUI application on uh, the browser. And then finally, there's the shared project. And that shared project is basically containing the bulk of the application, so no configuration. So if, you, if I open, let's say, UWP, you can see that inside there's pretty much nothing, uh, only only uh, platform specific files and configuration files. So for instance, the Apex manifest and, and some um, uh, platform uh, platform uh, certificate or same thing for the Skia host. Uh, well, maybe not that one because it has uh, specifics, but let's say for to GTK, there's going to be a program file, program.cs file that provides you um, uh, just the main project and that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and, uh, and um, edit that file, uh, we're going to make some modifications that, to that project. So I'm going to be running the UWP, UWP project. And the way it works is basically you work, uh, you open your, your, your run, you start your application directly on UWP and it's going to be development for UWP specifically. Um, so that's how it works here. 
I'm starting my application and uh, when I put my application on the side like this, it's all using Windows. So I'm, there's no Uno at this point. So it's, it's you develop your application using Windows and then you go over and modify your application using on Windows. And then afterwards, when you're done with, oh, there's the issue, uh, again, the issue with uh, UWP. So that, if that happens, you select the uh, UWP here, head, and then you go back and open uh, the file again. But this is, oh, let's try again. So we're working with Microsoft to uh, to ensure that uh, that those don't happen again. Uh, the, those uh, don't don't fail. So um, if you're, I'm, I'm showing you this because it's something that you may encounter if you have uh, if you're developing your application that way. So uh, Visual Studio is, is maybe maybe tricky in that. So if that doesn't work, you can uh, see it goes back to WebAssembly and Visual Studio can be uh, tricky on that. So you select it, then you close your, your Visual Studio and start it again. So let's start it again. It's something that you will encounter if you start your application. And uh, you can follow all those steps uh, with the page that, it, that is opened uh, when you're creating your application. And that's that's quite important to know. Um, so we're, we, uh, we've been working with Microsoft and the next version, the next preview version of Visual Studio is going to be having uh, some fixes in that regard so that uh, we're, we're not uh, you're stuck in that specific error message that you just saw. So now if I double click on my uh, XAML page, it should hopefully open in the proper thing. So you will see that it's uh, UWP opening here. So I'm starting my application again. I'm putting it on the side and uh, now, what, now uh, I, what I can do is basically take this application and uh, change the text here. And what you can see is that the text just happened to update automatically. So this is the uh, XAML hot reload feature that's, uh, that's available as part of uh, the UWP standard experience. And uh, uh, so what I can do now is include something like this. So I'm going to be adding a, uh, a simple, uh, let's say, let's change this. I'm going to be adding a slider at the bottom here. And let's call it that way. So my slider here. So you see my slider that happened to be at the top. So let's add a stack panel so that they, uh, so they, uh, they flow properly. So there it is. So I have my slider here. I can change it and move it, move it around. And one thing that's interesting is that I can take this and uh, change my, to add a binding here to the value property of the slider. And when that happens is that when that happened, I can see now that I've data bound the slider position to the text block that's over here through binding. So when I change that, then it happens to update that automatically. Um, so that's the uh, that's the base of the feature for development. So you're iterating your, uh, with your application using um, uh, using Visual Studio for uh, for Windows. And then once you're done, you can go over to the other targets and uh, make your application run there. So let's take, for instance, WebAssembly. Um, I'm going to go to WebAssembly here and and start the same application. So uh, using using uh, just a, a, the standard um, standard build technique. So I'm just pressing F5 and uh, it'll go. So what it's doing here is that it's building a new website. Uh, that it's going to be stored locally and served uh, through IIS Express, and uh, the browser is going to open and going to sh is going to show that application directly uh, using using this. So there you go. So the application started up, and it's now showing up the, the Uno logo and you're going to see that the application is now showing the same thing that I had before. So that's my uh, slider and uh, text block showing up and it's running inside of the, of the browser in the same way that it is for, uh, for, for UWP. And, you know, I can see that, you know, on the browser, it makes, you know, it's weird a little bit. So I'm going to change that. So let's say, for instance, if I um, want to alter a little bit the, uh, the, the layout of this, uh, of this application, I can, let's say, for instance, put a, a, uh, a different background on this and say, 
I want that to be red or I want that to have a padding that's, uh, you know, that it's too close to the border. I can uh, change that and uh, add that padding so that it goes over to the middle. So that's the kind of things that, that can happen when uh, when using uh, Visual Studio in in uh, in this, so uh, you're you're integrated with Visual Studio and you're working with all this, and that that makes it quite interesting for that to work properly. So another thing that that we're doing and that is available is that just slider is interesting, but you can probably just change that and use one of the integrated uh, controls that are provided by. Uh, by by uh, the by when you white lights uh, like navigation view for instance uh, here's the navigation view that uh, that allows you to add uh, items in there or uh, there are a few other controls that we've added recently as part of uh, of the when UI three wave that are um, um, you know that you can test right away inside of your application so I'm I'm going to be showing you one other thing so let's say I want to test this out on our Android for instance so let's go back a little bit so I can have my uh my stack panel and and this so let's start this again so i have a an android emulator running on the side here uh, and i'll be doing the same thing which is taking uh taking that same application running it on on the on the web on the on the android emulator uh on this case so i don't have a tyson watch to show you <laughs> uh, to show you this but uh there's a uh, Martin Zickman that has been doing quite a few interesting things with uh, running Uno uh, on uh, on a Tizen. Uh, I think it was a Tizen a Tizen watch, if I remember correctly. Uh, but expect a few uh, a few updates on that on that Tizen front if you were if you're interested. Um, so building on the building the application using Android is uh, always a bit slower. So that's why uh, iterating your iteration loop is uh, is important to have and run. Um, on on Windows because de deploying on Windows or even WebAssembly for that matter it's quite quite fast um, and it gets uh, it gets running there. Uh, so I got a question here. So how far is .NET five currently supporting third party libraries? Um, yes. So the, it depends on the in, on the libraries, but uh, if they're .NET five. Um, you know, let's say in the same way .NET standard libraries uh, were built. Um, it should run. It should run properly. And uh, if you have an example of a specific library that you're thinking about uh, that may be of interest, um, it should work properly. That being said, in the, in the ecosystem of Uno specifically, uh, .NET 5 is only supported for WebAssembly and Skia heads um, and, you know, and WinUI 3 heads as well. So uh, for now, uh, iOS and Android do not support uh, .NET 5. Uh, same thing for UWP. So there's a difference between UWP and WinUI uh, and WinUI 3. So uh, because uh, on UWP you don't you don't get to run application on the you know, on the desktop mode, uh, but if you're running on WinUI uh, WinUI 3, you have a way to run applications uh, using the desktop mode. So Here's my application uh, on uh, WinUI 3, but on, on the, the .NET 5 stuff, I'm, I'm going to be talking about .NET 5 a little bit after and when we go over to uh, some of the details. Um, so there it is. So if I have um, if I have this and I can change uh, my slider here, so it updated properly, and let's go and see if we can alter that same thing again. So if I want to change the background and uh, put some nice green uh, instead, Let's see if it uh, updates properly. So sometimes, yeah, there you go. So there's a, there's your update here. Uh, it's uh, it's updated properly, and same thing for the others. You know, if I change, uh, if I, I if I want to add some some margin and uh, other uh, other changing details, that's uh, that's the way it's happened. So I added a padding before, but now it's margin, so that's why it's white uh, on the side. And same thing if you want to use your navigation view. Because your navigation view is interesting, then uh, you can do that, and uh, you're gonna head, you're gonna get your navigation view. Um, I don't have. I thought I kept the. Um, I thought I kept the, the the browser opened, but let's see, let's see if we can do that another another way. So uh, we have the the way to support that. Well, let's say I start uh, my WebAssembly application again, and uh, we're gonna be. I'm going to be showing you something that's uh, that's of interest, and sometimes it's useful if you want to uh, move things around. So 
the application's building. Uh, that's all the message from the linker. So it's uh, something that allows your application to be quite smaller. It's something that's very important when uh, running um, when running on the on the, the web specifically, if you want your application to be smaller. Um, it's quite important on the mobile devices, but not as uh, as much as it is on uh, on those devices uh, on the web. So here's the application. I'm going to be starting it again uh, on Android, and we'll just try something out. So rebuilding it again and deploying it. So uh, you can see it's uh, it's behaving the same way as uh, the Windows navigation view is is doing, and we're working on providing an update for that control specifically. Uh, that's going to be uh, supporting the hierarchical navigation. So it's a kind of a uh, you know, be on the lookout for updates that we're going to be providing for WinUI uh, for the next version of Uno. Uh, so if I change back, let's say to if I remove my navigation view and I do this, and I go back to the stack panel with uh, this, and I update it, then both applications are going to be updating uh, with the same with the same layout. That, so that's the kind of things that we're providing as part of uh, um, uh, on this. So I see there's a question on a Mac. Uh, I, I can, I'll, I'll check if I can, I can make that demo running on the Mac as well. Uh, we're gonna, gonna go uh, to that at the, uh, in, a, in, a, you know, in, a few, in a few demos. So let's see, uh, now, what about uh, GTK? So let's go to GTK. So GTK is a uh, uh, what we're calling for Uno is a container and allows you to uh, create your application and run it uh, run it using Skia. So the the difference there is that um, when we're going to Android and iOS and and WebAssembly for that matter. So if you if you take a look at the at the application here when we're running an application for for WebAssembly. The difference is that on iOS, Android, and WebAssembly, the controls that are drawn by WinUI um, basically are rendered using native primitives. So that means that a text block is going to be rendered as a UI label or something like that. And same thing goes for the web. So when your application is de deployed on the web, uh, the, the output of this is going to be an actual... Uh, an actual uh, set of divs and other things like that. So if I open uh, the elements, uh, the elements here, you can see that if I go to the zero here, there's a p element with a zero in it. So that means that uh, for features like accessibility and interaction with the system that may not be available as part of the APIs provided by the rest of the system. Um, then it's easy for us to provide access to those features. And accessibility is one key feature that we we want um, we want people to be able to use. But in some cases, uh, it can be uh, it, you know it may be easier to work with directly with pixels, and that's what the GTK head is about. Uh, it's all about making sure that uh, you're we're drawing you using uh, using all pixels at, uh, you know, when, when providing access to the to the platform and allows us to go to uh, to Linux as well so let, let's run that application so this is going to be I'm selecting the local app, the local uh, platform so when I run the application I'm basically uh, building a, a .NET uh, 3 application at this point so it's a .NET 3 application and .NET core 3 uh, 3.1 application. Um, that shows up a uh, window with uh, the same content that we had before. So I can change uh, my my same um, uh, slider here and have that content update properly. So that's the application. It's a it's a it's an actual Windows application running um, running on uh, running on on my machine. So if I if you take a look here, it's actually running uh, directly in in bin. So it's on, it's running really on Windows. But the interesting thing is that. Um, well, I can actually change that content to uh, to red for that. For instance, uh, it's going to update the same way. So hot reload is available for that. But if I go over and change that to run on WSL two, so that's where it gets interesting. Um, I can select that, and then uh, one thing to change is to go to the properties here and change to add an environment variable to say that I want to use the display. Uh, the display to be 
uh, zero. So I'm I'm actually running a uh, an X11 server on my machine. Uh, it's called um, XVC Serve. Uh, so I launched it prior. So it's available. I launched it already. It's available already on my machine. So it's it's uh, listening to clients on my local machine. And if I go back to my Visual Studio and start again, then what's going to happen is that the same application is is going to be running inside of WSL. So WSL is, uh, for those who don't know, it's a Windows subsystem for Linux. It's basically a version, uh, a, a Linux environment running inside of uh, your Windows, but uh, provide that provides access to all those fancy features uh, uh, that, that Windows provides in the, the development environment. So that's, that's the same application, but this time, so it looks like a Windows application, but now if you look at the debugger, you can see that there are paths that are Linux based. So the application is really running inside of WSL uh, on, that, on that application. So uh, the, the window is displayed by Windows through uh, XVC. So if, I, if you look at that, it's a VCX SRV window server. Um, so that is providing access from uh, the, the feature running on, on Linux. So that same application is going to, is able to run on Linux uh, pretty much the same way directly and that's why we you know we provided for instance the the windows calculator that we windows calculator that we ported over a while back um and uh, that runs on linux or raspberry pis or, or others so you get access to all those uh, same kind of features there uh and to show you that to show the power of this and uh you know it's it's always quite amazing to see is that you can really go in your code and put breakpoints and still debug your application running on Linux on your machine. So there it is. I have my breakpoint and it's the same debugging experience that I have uh, when running uh, on Windows. It's pretty much the same thing. So that's that's pretty uh, pretty interesting to see. You, know, you got even uh, the features like um, access to uh, the thread stuff and parallel stacks and all of that. So this is this is all available. So that's that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. So let's take a look at the questions. Uh, I think there was there were questions about .NET 5, if I remember correctly. Um, XAML hot reload, Skia canvas. Um, if rendered on a Skia canvas, is there something like a dirty, region, dirty re uh, rectangle invalidation? Uh, that's something that we're, we're doing internally. Um, but at this point, it's optimization that we're going to make in the future. We're just updating specifically a uh, we're updating the whole uh, the whole window. And for now, we're not using hardware acceleration as well. So it is something that we're going to be providing in the future. And that's that's all Skia um, that's providing those features. But for now, we're just using uh, software uh, rendering. Um, how well does GTK three work for Windows compared to the X eleven X eleven stuff you're showing now? Uh, well, I mean, it works pretty much the same way. Uh, there aren't many differences. Um, uh, maybe the only thing, no, it's, it's actually been fixed recently. I was I was thinking about the the uh, the updates for theming. So if you're a uh, dark theme and then light theme, that works properly now, um, even on Windows. So you can change the theming properly with between uh, between those. That's uh, that's pretty interesting. Um, we're always on the lookout for uh, the lookout for for issues. So if you find anything that doesn't work properly when using GTK either on Windows or on Linux or on macOS for that matter, because you can run uh, you can run that head uh, directly on macOS. That's uh, that's available as well. Uh, you'll be able to do that as well. Um, so. I'm going to be going uh, to show you how we can update all this to run on .NET 5. So the first we can try is uh, GTK. It's the easiest one. So you can see that the application here uh, is a .NET Core app uh, 3.1. So upgrading that to .NET 5 is actually quite easy. You just change that and put 5.0 at the end. You let a little bit of NuGet to restore packages. You can see that at the end. And uh, what's going to happen is that when you start your application again, it's going to be built again, but this time using .NET 5. And uh, you can see that in the path uh, of the application that's been, that's running. You can see now that it's running in the, in the .NET 5 target. So same application running .NET 5, same kind of breakpoints running .NET 5. Uh, and uh, and you can benefit from the, all the fancy new features that are uh, available from there. So that's the same application running on .NET 5. Uh, so now, if I do the same thing with 
um, with uh, with uh, WebAssembly. So let's go for WebAssembly. So I'm going to be able so the support for WebAssembly in .NET 5 is something that's still in preview. Uh, we're uh, we're running uh, for .NET 5 using the latest and greatest from uh, the uh, Uno platform uh, from the uh, .NET uh, .NET team. Sorry. And uh, they're actually actually actively working on that support. So, but for now, if you want to to do that, you can basically go to your um, to your uh, .NET NuGet uh, so you, to your NuGet package manager, and then you go to your updates, and then you select the Bootstrapper and Dev Server updates here, and update to uh, update Uno WebAssembly as well. So you update well, actually let's update all of them. Uh, still no uh, logging and console if uh, you have uh, questions for those. This is something that we're working on uh, as part of the .NET 5 upgrade, uh, so that uh, that the latest packages can be used uh, properly against against Uno. Uh, it's a matter of the template itself, so that's something that uh, we're going to be updating as part of the templates, and uh, and you're going to be able to use those properly. So now I've updated that, and I'm can I can now go to um, here and change the net standard to that's part of the WebAssembly project and use net 5.0 and once that's done so we let NuGet restore and all of this and uh, let's do a rebuild this time so while it's building let's take a look at the questions um yeah um so Let's uh, let, yes. So let's talk about this. There's a uh, WebAssembly library. So I there was a question about this to make sure that it was about .NET five. So um, let's see if there was. Uh, can we access hardware APIs? So uh, yes, you can access hardware APIs. So depending on the platforms you're running into, uh, Uno is not hiding anything from the underlying platform. So what we do provide in some cases is a uniform access to those APIs. So for instance, if you want to go to the geolocation APIs, um, we've implemented those for WebAssembly, iOS, Android, and, uh, and Mac OS, if I, rem if I remember correctly. And uh, you can go through those APIs and you're going to get access to the, uh, to the geolocation APIs underneath um, without having to understand how they work uh, you know, using the platform. But if, you, if, if that's not available um, through, uh, through, through Uno and the WinRT APIs, one good example is uh, if you want to run on a Raspberry Pi. Um, uh, if, if you're on a Raspberry Pi, you can, um, you can access the GPIO uh, GPIO APIs by running the package that Microsoft is providing for that. And that is a package that's only available on uh, on Raspberry Pi. So uh, for uh, for devices that do uh, provide access to GPIOs. Um, but uh, that's something that you can provide, uh, that you can access to. So you don't need, you don't need Uno to get access to the hardware features that are underneath. But if, if, uh, if you want to access those those by yourself, you can go through and just do it by yourself directly. We're not hiding anything uh, from you, which uh, uh, in some cases is a is a is a problem if uh, you can't access it. Um, I see there's quite a few people, so uh, you can give me a follow uh, on uh, on the uh, on the on Twitch. Uh, I'm gonna be streaming about Uno platform development every Tuesday uh, at 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, so if you want to learn more about uh, Uno and see how we're developing Uno and ask questions uh, if you want, that's something that you can um, you be notified with, be notified of when I and uh, when I go online and uh, and start developing on Uno. Um, so that's it. It built. So it it takes a bit more time because it had to download the the new SDK. So it downloads it once and then it builds everything. So you can see here it's a building for .NET 5. And when I, if I start the application, the same thing, the application is now starting again and it's running exactly the same, but using .NET 5. So uh, there's nothing specific that needs to be shown to, uh, to, to, to uh, demonstrate that it's running on .NET 5, aside maybe the, from the fact that if you're looking at the files that are downloaded on the network, um, you can see that if I might change my application, there's nothing that happens on the network. But let's say I, re, um, I restart this uh, to show you that it's actually .NET Core that is running. Um, that file 
So the system.private.corelib.clr is something that's coming from .NET 5 uh, and 6. So uh, that's different from uh, the, the uh, MS Core lib that you can find when running uh, previous versions of .NET or, or Omono. Omon Omon so that's uh, that's one thing that you can do to uh, to go and update to get to uh, WebAssembly there. So that's it for uh, for this demo. Um, I really want to I wanted to show you a, a few things that that we've been doing with uh, with WebAssembly. Uh, one of the thing is uh, WebAssembly and others uh, for that matter. Um, so the first one is. Uh, the Uno Playground. Uh, the Uno Playground is an application that we've been developing for a while uh, that shows what you can do with uh, with the Uno platform and um, and specifically with features that are that are provided by uh, by WinUI and and others. And uh, so it's taking a while to load. I'm not sure exactly why. There you go. Uh, it's probably we have a. We have a um, a feature in the background that provides access to uh, all those you know snippets and and uh, and features that are available here. So you can test out quite a few things like animations, borders, and others. Like for instance, if you want to test out animations, uh, you can do this and and test it out. Um, this is using the Monaco editor. Uh, this is something that has been integrated uh, recently, so that uh, we provide you know proper highlighting and uh, and other things like uh, the minimap and others uh, from the from the uh, uh, the Monaco editor so that's that's quite nice to uh, to see there um, so it allows you to test out things like um, uh, test out things and uh, make sure that they do work so one thing that we added recently is the the ability to view um, to use the tree view control so that control is is quite interesting and something that we had, we didn't add uh, we didn't we we hadn't added before because uh, Uno at the beginning was targeted mostly as at uh, at mobile devices because we were implementing features from the .NET uh, from uh, from WinUI uh, at that time because it was targeted specifically at the 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 uh, at mobile applications but as time went we started uh, having questions about well. I'm developing an application that's run on runs on WebAssembly and on large screens, and I I want to uh, I want to be able to uh, display you know, fancy things like uh, uh, you know tree views and others that uh, that are available there, and uh, and uh, that's something that now that is now now available and you can use. Uh, so that for instance that that one is interesting because actually you can actually data bind uh, data bind the content of uh, the tree view and it updates right away. So that's that's pretty nice. Um, it's a it's a nice control for you for you to to test out. Uh, there's another control that's called the data grid that uh, that that is available that is um, uh, that is coming from the WinUI to, the WinUI, uh, the um, the Windows Community Toolkit that we're providing access to that is uh, pr uh, providing uh, additional features like the the data grid. Another control that we have is the uh, the tab view. Uh, the tab view is something that's been added recently, and that control is pretty nice because it allows you to um, to change tabs and uh, you know even add new tabs. So that one's in wire because you have to add, you have to manage uh, the um, you have to manage it using the plus button, and you when you click you add a you add a new tab and things like that. But that's the kind of things that you can do, and uh, you know, if you want to change that, and it updates automatically with the the new uh, the new items that are added there. Um, so what's uh, what's available there? Um, so the, the playground is one one interesting thing. Another one that's interesting is the um, the Skia Sharp, and that one is is actually quite fun because um, it's something that uh, we've been we've, we've been we've been providing um, access to, and I'm not sure if this one's going to work because there's a bug in. Uh, the dev bits of uh, of Skia of of, uh, of Edge. Oh yeah, that one. So if you have that issue, uh, this is this is actually a problem that's coming from the the, the latest builds uh, of uh, of Edge, and there's a new opened issue for this. So I don't know if I have Edge uh, or Chrome. Let's see. Maybe I have Chrome uh, Chrome Chrome available for that one. Oh, I have Chrome uh, the Chrome. So Chrome stable and and Edge stable don't have that issue. So if I open that in the letter in the, in, the uh, uh, in Skia directly, you're gonna see that 
uh, in in, in uh, Chrome directly, you're gonna see that it actually shows up properly, and uh, and that it shows up the the proper content uh, the proper content there. So when I click on a few things here, uh, this is about running Skia. So Skia is the library that shows uh, that shows you quite a few things. Um, that shows you quite a few things with with regards to uh, you know drawing pixels. Uh, that's that's what it is. And uh, Chrome and uh, Edge are both rendered using Skia. So the things that you see at the top here and uh, on the menus and all of that, this is all rendered using Skia. And uh, you're you're able to use it through Skia Sharp. So that Skia Sharp is some is a binding on top of Skia, and it has quite a few features like this. So like a matrix, matrix filtering, a composition shaders, and and to show you that it's actually rendered, uh, uh, you know, at real time. So this one is using uh, software rendering, but we're uh, working on providing um, you know um, uh, a GPU accelerated uh, versions of this. So that that's gonna make it a lot uh, a lot faster. Uh, I see that there's a question about PWAs. So PWAs is, is quite interesting, and I'm going to show you actually one PWA that we've we've uh, we've implemented. Uh, it's the Uno calculator. So that's the calculator that uh, that we've we've put it over from the Microsoft code. And uh, when you when you when you open that that uh, that uh, that application, you can see that uh, there's a way to install that as part of a tool uh, where you can install the application. So here. You can say, well, I, pro I probably installed that already, <laughs> so it's uh, it. Let's say, uh, let's say, uninstall. It's going to be easier. Let's say I'm going to uninstall that application. So I had the calculator installed already, uh, the Uno calculator. I'm going to be uninstalling it, so you see it. Uh, it actually ends up being in the in in here as well. Uh, Ah, that's the that's the integration. So sometimes when you it's the integration from the from the web. So when you uninstall the application, it happens to 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 tell you to go to uh, uh, to go to your uninstallation, but it, it's actually not there. Um, so let's let's re, re, retry that. So when you're making a PWA, it's basically a new manifest, and that manifest is there, and your application your your browser is going to tell you install the application. So uh, it's going to tell you to install that application using this. So you click install, and then the application closes and opens up. Actually, yeah, closes up and opens up as part of a standard application that happens to be in your uh, taskbar. So that's pretty that's pretty interesting to see. Um, and how do you make an application like that? Well, uh, we the Uno supports uh, the the application manifest. So if you go to um, if you go to the the, the calculator, calculator's website, uh, let's let's go to that one for instance. Um, so you can click here; it's going to open the browser to go to the calculator. And if you go to the sources of the calculator and go to the WebAssembly versions of it, you're going to see that there's a manifest.json, and that manifest basically contains uh, you know name, scope, standalone uh, colors, descriptions, and a few things like that. And where to get the application if you're running uh, on uh, on the browser on the on the device like uh, getting it from the Play Store or the App Store or things like that and that file is actually generated you uh, can be generated by using the um, PWA PWA Builder um, .com website where you can point your application your existing application to uh, to this and then it will generate. All of it for you, so, and you can pro provide one asset, and it's gonna is gonna generate all the assets uh, for you. And you you don't want to generate that full list of things here, <laughs> so that's something that's the um, that the the website is gonna do for you. Uh, so yeah, so that's the uh, that's the the Skia based rendering, and um, I'm gonna actually show you something uh, that that we're that we're doing, and um, we we have some live example that you can. Uh, you can basically do for yourself. Um, and I'm going to go to that website here. So in Uno, you have a site that's called uno.samples. And that Uno samples that website, so Uno samples website is about getting you access to quite a few samples that are built and maintained. Um, and that gives you, um, I think I had it already. Um, and that gives you 
things like access to data grid and tree views and uh, Skia and SQLite and a few other demos like this one. So uh, we're going to take a look at one specific demo with uh, with regards to Skia. So we have a Skia Sharp test sample app here. And uh, we're going to test this one out specifically on uh, on WebAssembly so that you can see that it's uh, uh, you can you can experiment it by yourself. Um, so same same application here. So I can go and uh, set that application one up. And what that that application is doing while it's building, uh, it's basically having a, a canvas that's in the XAML here. So you got a Skia can, uh, XAML canvas that's available here, and we got a callback for unpaid surface, and the, that paint surface is going is going to be doing a very simple thing, which is drawing some text, and and clearing uh, the canvas to be yellow on the background. So that's what it is. And uh, while the application is building, it's supposed to be ending up pretty soon, I guess. So this one is interesting because it's actually using what, uh, something that we call a static linking. And that static linking is about uh, using WSL to build for WebAssembly. Uh, while it builds, uh, there was a question about Uno for commercial support or tools. Uh, at this point, there aren't any costs for using Uno. Uh, the only thing that we're doing, and that's the business model that we're having, we're pretty much using the Red Hat model, which is if you want uh, to have issues that you've opened fixed, uh, you, uh, you want the issues that you've opened fixed uh, faster. Uh, we are providing uh, professional support, so uh, just contact us, and then uh, we'll we'll uh, see what we can what we can do uh, uh, with uh, working with you. Uh, does it make sense to migrate a project from Xamarin Forms to Uno? Uh, well, it really depends on what you're doing, and it's uh, and depend on depending on the targets that you're trying uh, to reach. Uh, maybe sometimes the investment uh, could make sense to go over to WinUI because you want to target the new uh, the the newer uh, WebAssembly or get uh, maybe more performance de depending on the targets that you want to have. Um, and do we know if uh, so? And so that's the that's one target and getting to Xamarin Forms. But if you want to keep the your Xamarin Forms application, we have also uh, the ability to we have the ability to uh, to get your application for Xamarin Forms to be migrated over to uh, WebAssembly automatically. So we're providing a set of renderers that allow you have your application to run uh, automatically there. If you're if you're interested, uh, we have on the uh, Uno platform. Uh, you know, actually, it's, it's better in the documentation. Let's go to uh, the documentation here. Uh, at the top, you have a docs here, and in the documentation, you got the getting started uh, with the .NET new here, uh, .NET new templates, and there's a template specifically for uh, WebAssembly and Xamarin Forms. So that's something that you can use to to go over uh, and and uh, run it on the web. Um, so that's that. So let's uh, take a look at that. So you, you can see here that uh, my application is building so that it's setting it up itself. Uh, it's downloading Mscripten. Mscripten is a library that's uh, um, that pro that is providing uh, a way for, uh, um, let's say, .NET code or C and C++ code to be compiled over to uh, to WebAssembly. So that's the first run, and that's it's setting it setting itself up. So I'm not hiding anything in, in that regard. Uh, so to show you what uh, what you're going to be experiencing there, and once it's done, it's actually building everything up, and uh, you're going to get access to uh, to all those uh, additional features there. Um, is it possible to use the WebGL canvas? Uh, so yes, you can you can use the WebGL canvas. It's something that uh, you're probably going to have to do you, to do manually by yourself at this point, uh, either by using the um, uh, the native API. So there's something that you can do. So the the Uno Bootstrapper. So I'm going to show you the Bootstrapper. The Bootstrapper is something that provides access to uh, that provides access to the uh, their lying platform uh, and get access to the native features. And uh, you can go to uh, the Bootstrapper. I'm going to be showing you that one specifically while it builds in the back. Um, there's a way to do p-invoke to mscript and provided features. So native here. So if you search for um, 
uh, debugging and things like that. So you can find here that you can do something that's called uh, DLL import native. And if you have a, a set of, of C++ code that allows you to access features for WebGL, you can go through that. But you can also go through uh, the, 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 the uh, JavaScript interop. And there's uh, a pretty great article that uh, Carl from the UNO team has written to, uh, to provide that. And if you go to the UNO platform website and the documentation, you're going to find uh, in advanced topics, uh, there's a way to do um, custom event handling or embedding an existing JavaScript component in Uno. So that specific article is going to be providing you a way to execute your own JavaScript from C Sharp and integrate pretty much with anything. So it's kind of your escape gate to go to uh, to the uh, to go to the JavaScript world if you want to. Um, what else do you have? Uh, Infragistix has been providing a set of uh, interesting, uh, interesting, uh, interesting things with uh, um, their latest update. So um, I have that. Let's see if it does it properly. So you have uh, Infragistix uh, Ultimate tw twenty point two. That's that's providing access to many features and it's providing. Lots of updates uh, with uh, the access to Uno platform and uh, the same controls for WinUI and, and uh, UWP. So uh, we're talking about bullet charts, uh, category charts, data grids, and others. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can come over to uh, the Discord chat. And uh, Brian Lagunas from the from the uh, Infrasistics team is uh, <laughs> is has been very eager to get feedback on those preview controls that uh, they've been releasing recently. And uh, I think is yeah I think is answering questions on the chat. So uh, thank you, Brian. Um, another question that was uh, that that is oh there it is. So that's the uh, Skia Sharp application that built. So it took a while, but it took a while for one good reason. Uh, it was for uh, the fact that it uh, it built for there. So same bug here. You see it's uh, not showing up anything. But if I go to uh, my uh, Chrome stable app stable, I can see that the content is showing up properly and it's going to be showing a yellow uh, background with a skier sharp in the middle. So you can basically do the same thing. And this is working pretty nicely on other platforms as well. So that's uh, one sample to uh, to take a look at if you want to do uh, some skier sharp development on the web or other platforms for that matter. Another question is, if is Threads release working on .NET 5? So no, not at this point, but it's something that I'm probably going to be taking a look during one of the um, uh, uh, streamings that I'm going to be doing on the on Tuesdays. Uh, so it's something that the, the .NET team is working on. Uh, the biggest problem that there is with threading in .NET 5 uh, with, um, uh, with WebAssembly is that not all browsers are equal in that in that sense, and especially with regards to uh, Safari. So at this point, Safari is not supporting the uh, Atomics feature that is required to get uh, threading uh, working on uh, on the on the web. So once that that's there, it's gonna get uh, it's gonna get there. But uh, it's something that we're gonna be taking a look to get uh, added to .NET five. Um... Hey, Shimmy, <laughs> thanks for, thank you for joining us. So uh, another thing that I can probably show you quickly is uh, another sample that we have, which is the WCT data grid. Uh, it's a very quick one, but people have been asking for that, uh, that demonstration and uh, making it run. So uh, it's the, the, the data grid that's been provided by Microsoft uh, coming from Civil Life, if I remember, remember correctly. Uh, so it's been ported over, um, uh, uh, put it over to uh, to UWP and then over to WinUI. That's something that's going to be happening uh, soon. And uh, so let's take a look at that. So this is building, it's downloading an SDK to get that running. And it looks like it's there. Let's see. So that data grid is, is quite a powerful control. It's uh, one of the few very complex controls that are available as part of, uh, of the community toolkit. And uh, that's your data grid. So you can you know, specify columns and combo box columns and things like that, and have uh, uh, selections, uh, selections, and and uh, your carrot stuff. So that that's lots of features that are available in that control. So you can definitely take a look 
at that one and uh, give feedback to the WC team and the XAML Lama that are working on that specific control. Um, so definitely take a look and, uh, and let us know uh, how that goes for you. Um, so this is the uh, this is the daily grid, and let's see if it is probably just loading up. Let's see if it uh, no, still loading up. So said that's probably something that we oh there it is. So that's so the reason it does this it's the application is built using the interpreter, and the interpreter is is actually quite slower than uh, the same version running uh, AOT. So that's something that uh, that, uh, that application is not doing because it takes a bit longer to build, but it gives you an idea of uh, the type of things that are available in, in, the, in that context. So uh, this is the application and you can see that you can um, select, if, uh, select, select items and show a combo box and, and edit the content. So that's the, that's the, uh, uh, that's the data grid running uh, inside of, uh, inside of an UNO app. Um, are there any other questions that are available? Not at this point, but there's, there were quite a few questions. So thank you. Uh, thank you for those questions. If there are any questions uh, that I didn't see, uh, I can try to do a Mac demo. Yes, uh, if I have a few minutes, it's kind of a, I don't know if I have access to my, let's see. Oh, I'm pretty sure it is. <laughs> pretty sure that the data grid from uh, Infrastatics is faster. Uh, it, it's actually going to be even even faster when the AOT is going to be available. So uh, for WebAssembly, so that's uh, oh, oop. that's not that one. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if it works. So .NET 5 there, uh, so um, let's let's try to do a small demo with uh, Mac in there. So let's see if I can move down that a little bit. So I'm going to be auto-scaling. And so the first thing that we do generally is, um, actually, it's probably, it's probably available already. So the, the, the Visual Studio team has been working on something that's very interesting, is that we're providing .NET new templates. So things that you can use in the command line. So if you're on a terminal and you do .NET new, dot, uh, .NET new uh, dot i and then you install the templates uh, that I that I've shown. Oh, probably going to close that one. It's going to be easier. Um, there's a .NET new templates here that are available in there. And if you install those .NET template uh, from the command line, you can access to .NET new Uno app, and that's something that you can use on Linux, on Windows, on Mac, and things like that. So uh, it's a flow that's uh, that's of interest to um, to a lot of people especially on Linux, because that's the only way to do that for now. Uh, but the, the, the .NET team, uh, the Visual Studio team has been doing something very interesting, is that if you install those templates from the command line using uh, the, the, the documentation that I've shown you, then the application happened to show up as well as part of the .NET new experience inside of Visual Studio for Mac. So that's pretty cool. And uh, so that's, uh, for now, it's a uh, preview feature. So if you want to enable it, you have to go and check a uh, mark. But that is documented in our uh, getting started for uh, Visual Studio for Mac. Um, and then uh, that's something that you can uh, you can do there. It's documented here. You can check, uh, show all .NET, temp .NET Core templates in the project, uh, new project dialog. And then let's go and uh, create that solution. So uh, test test stream. Let's create that. And let's see how that does. So it's created all uh, all those heads. Um, so the templates that I have installed on the Mac are not the latest. So there are some that are, that are not there yet, but let's take a look. So if we go and uh, run the an iOS application, so maybe not on an iPod Touch, let's do it on, a, on an iPhone Pro and see where that goes. So it looks like there probably has been an issue with restoring. So let's say, so that, that package I'm gonna be removing because it, uh, it has an issue with, uh, um, with .NET. So let's, let's take a look again. So it's something that we're working on with uh, the .NET team and, say, and, and making sure that uh, that does work properly. Uh, so let's restore the packages. So it says uh, WPF host. So uh, in the documentation when you're creating something, there's a there's a, a checkbox to do. So I'm going to be removing that project as well because that's a Windows project that's not needed for now. 
So let's restore those package again. So the restoring takes place this time. And then I can start my application now. So same thing here. Uh, so uh, you get your shared project with uh, with this XAML here. So Hot Reload's not yet supported for uh, for Visual Studio for Mac. Uh, it's something that we're considering uh, adding at some point. Uh, but uh, for now, it's not it's not there. It's not yet available. So you have to stop your application, make your modifications, and start again. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much it. So that's uh, that's the iOS one. Uh, we once that's built, we're going to take a look at the Mac OS one. So that's uh, that's an iPhone, and that that's your application starting up. Oh, that's a new thing. So that's another that's another one. So I'm using the preview preview bits of Visual Studio. And there's uh, something if you're if you're doing that kind of uh, development, you're going to have to update a few things in your application. So I'm going to be showing you that one. This is something that's pretty new. Uh, the uh, the .NET team. That's that's why I'm waiting on .NET five. Uh, you know with. Uh, you know, I'm waiting on .NET five very eagerly, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, it's because there's a. Uh, uh, there's a missing missing uh, missing assembly, and one of those things is that uh, the because the, the, the because uh, .NET on uh, iOS and Android is not versioned, then there can be issues with uh, with assemblies that are missing. So it's something that uh, you can change and, and adjust. Uh, but you know, with .NET six, everything all, all of this versioning things that I'm changing here that is going to go away and that's going to help significantly to make all those things uh, work better. So let's uh, let's try it again. I'm probably going to need to uh, re restore my NuGet packages again to make sure that it's uh, using the proper ones. Restoring, there it is. Let's try it again. So this time with uh, that update, uh, it's actually using .NET standard 2.1. So the reason it's it's done that way, oh, it changed to the iPod Touch again for some reason. Okay, let's stop it. Let's stop it again and, and run it again for the iPhone Pro. I think I selected the Max one, if I remember correctly. No, iPhone 11 4.3. Let's take the iPhone 11 iOS 4.3 so that it doesn't restart again. And after that, we're just going to jump quickly to um, there it is with the updates. So if you want to run with the preview of Visual Studio for Mac, uh, this is going, uh, Visual Studio for Mac. This is one thing to update. Uh, the latest builds of uh, the .NET, uh, the latest builds of the uh, uh, of Uno and uh, 2.4, uh, uh, 3.4. That's going to uh, be released soon is not going to be having that issue so it's uh it's going to be fixed already uh, so let's take a look quickly at mac os and then after that if there are any other questions or there it is so let's start the mac what happens there's an error missing method found probably oh that's uh probably just a, a thing so that's uh one other thing of legal living on the edge uh I was I wasn't about to demo the something here on uh, on Mac, but you know uh, when you're running on the on preview software that happens. So let's take a look at GTK. Let's take a look at GTK. Maybe that one's gonna work. We'll see. I think I installed GTK on that machine, so maybe it will give uh, us an idea. Uh, let's see. It does. So that's the you know I've, I've installed everything. So that's the GTK head running on. Uh, on Mac OS, so that's uh, one of the things that makes it very interesting. So if you're, if you're, uh, if you want to target Linux, uh, you can develop on your Mac for your ski ahead, and then put and, and run that uh, over to your Mac. Uh, there were quite a few questions. What about Blazor compatibility? Um, so Blazor is something that uh, that is Blazor is a technology that using the same underlying technology that we are, which is uh, the .NET. Uh, .NET 6 uh, or .NET 5 that's underneath and we're providing we're, we're using the same thing and that's in the future if you have something that is of interest to you uh, with Blazor compatibility uh, just let us know open an issue on the uh, on the uh, on our GitHub repo but we have also a demonstration that we've uh, provided recently uh, that is the I'm going to be showing you that one quickly if you haven't seen it already uh, so it's if I remember correctly so I think Carl posted that 
on uh no there was that demo wasn't there so let's take a look i think it was called blazer aot dot platform dot uno so to give you a, an idea of that what that does uh it's basically an application that is so it's blazer compiled to WebAssembly, uh, to come back to WebAssembly uh, using AOT. Uh, and that's that's uh, what it is. So it's taking a bit of time to load. Let's see if it's take, if it works properly. It should be. Uh, it, it's taking a, taking some time to download the download the file. So that, that one's a bit bigger. So there it is. So that's a Blazor application using the tooling from Uno to provide AOT access. Um, the AOT access is, is, has been worked on by the, uh, the Blazor team. It's not something with that we've we've needed, but we say, well, while we're experimenting with .NET 6 and that Blazor is doing the same thing, uh, let's take a look and see what we can do. So uh, that's something that is actually updating um, that using Skia. And I can probably show you that it's it's really using uh, AOT and uh, Skia underneath because there's the same bug that I've shown you uh, with uh, uh, with the previous preview version of uh, of Skia, so, to, so uh, of uh, of Edge and uh, and uh, Chrome, so that's uh, one of the ideas that happens there. Uh, there wasn't a question. There was a question with WSL required to build Wasm AOT. Yes, at this point there is a requirement, uh, but the .NET team is working to get uh, platform specific uh, to oh, well, uh, let's say Mac OS and Windows. Uh, AOT build uh, for for WebAssembly, so it'll, it'll be available at some point. Uh, for now, with Uno, you need WSL to to build uh, Web, WebAssembly or an actual Linux machine that happens to work as well. Um, so yes, the uh, instruction to get used on the Mac. Yes, that's something that uh, that that needs to be updated and. Uh, everything is preview <laughs> with the Mac, so that's something that we're we're going to be updating. Uh, we we've updated that recently, but that's something that uh, is going to be uh, updating. Uh, if Uno controls are rendered by Skia, is everything invalidated every frame, or is there something like a dirty rect invalidation? So, uh, no, not at this point. There's not dirty rect invalidation at this point. We're re-rendering re re everything, uh, but that's something that will be. Uh, We'll be adding at some point in the future to make sure that we don't update the whole the whole screen every time. Uh, do you plan to migrate from Blazor Razor to Uno? Uh, there is no migration from Blazor to to Uno. Uh, Uno is 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 standalone in some ways. Uh, we're not using Blazor or Razor or anything to uh, to uh, to do this. Uh, th aside from that demo specifically. Uh, that demo is actually just Blazor in itself. It's just using the tooling to pack the Uno tooling to pack to be packaging the app. But that's the, that's the only thing. That application is not using Razor in any kind. Uh, this is just plain XAML and C Sharp and uh, and .NET five uh, underneath, and that's running uh, uh, what what you're seeing here. Um, so that's pretty much it. I think it, I made quite a few turns around uh, to show all this. Uh, are there any other questions? Yes. Uh, so at last, uh, so there was the infrastructure controls that we, uh, we've we seen. I'm just going to go through the last of the slides. Uh, infrastructure controls, just take, give them a, give them a, uh, give them a wave and try them. Uh, they're pretty amazing. Um, and, uh, you know, lots of, few, lots of things that are happening in that, in that, in that space. So, uh, you're pretty excited to work with uh, the Infrastructure team to uh, to get those controls running uh, on Uno platforms and all the and all the target platforms. Um, we got free and paid support. So if you go to Stack Overflow and uh, and others, uh, you know, like Discord and uh, GitHub, and uh, paid support, uh, if you can contact us directly. Uh, that's uh, things that we we are providing. And uh, there's a draw, the prize draw. You know. Uh, an introductory course at, uh, on Udemy um, that uh, has been done by a member of the community. So uh, go to uh, the platform.uno.prizedraw and uh, it's going to be providing you uh, access to that prize and uh, a chance to win uh, that uh, those uh, $29 US uh, um, course to, to get there. Uh, there's also the platform, uh, Uno Platform 2021 survey. So if you want to influence the way we're uh, working on features, uh, just let us know. You know, it's uh, taking the part of that survey is uh, very important for us, and uh, 
you know, we're probably going to be uh, taking a look at that. We're definitely going to be taking a look at what you've uh, answered there and uh, adjust our targets for uh, for the year uh, and uh, and see what changes changed in the industry with uh, the newcomers that are interested into Uno. And uh, so the Q and A and thank you. That's the things that we've done. So that's. Uh, We've done quite a bit already. Uh, so I'm going to be taking a look at the, the few last questions that are there. Uh, let's take a look. Oh, uh, I'm going to give the uh, the price draw <laughs> drive a again. So you can take a look at that. Yes. Uh, so one of the last few questions. So when will you have C-Sharp 9 and F-Sharp 5 support? Uh, so C-Sharp 9 is already available. So if you're, uh, if you're targeting and building with uh, C-Sharp 9, uh, we're building with the uh, .NET 5, uh, like the one that I did here. Uh, so when you're targeting .NET 5, C-Sharp 9 is available uh, automatically. As with F-Sharp, um, it's not something that we're, we're uh, explicitly adding support for, but uh, there are members of the community that, that are taking a look at it pretty hard, um, so in adding support for it. So you can develop libraries using F-Sharp uh, that are targeting the Uno platform, but the main application for now needs to still be in C-Sharp. But... Uh, uh, you know, come over to uh, Discord and, uh, and let's chat uh, with uh, Experiandry that's uh, been looking at that uh, specifically. Uh, and the last one was WebSockets. Uh, so what the WebSocket error that you see in the in the browser when you're uh, when you're using an Uno application, it's actually expected. It's something that it's uh, so it only happens in debug and it's used for the XAML the XAML hot reload. So you can ignore. You can ignore those messages. Uh, XAML Previewer and Editor on the Mac. Uh, yes, at some point. Uh, pre Previewer, maybe not, but Hot Reload, yes. Uh, hot Reload is something that we, we, we want to make uh, work. It's possible to hack it around and make it work, but we don't want you to hack around and we want it to be, uh, to be, uh, to be available as a default plugin. So uh, it's something that we'll uh, be providing at some point. Um, anyways. Uh, and uh, does Uno Wasm run interpreted or compiled? It can be both. It can be either interpreted or compiled. So if you want to target the compiled mode, uh, you can go over to our documentation. Uh, and uh, there's a bit of documentation on the bootstrapper to uh, to to go with AOT. So uh, you get configuration for AOT mixed mode and static linking. And uh, you can enable AOT by... Uh, going here and you got the wasm shell mono runtime execution mode and you can change that to uh, interpreter on AOT or full interpreter and AOT or full AOT and you can change that that works pretty well um, okay so that's it I think uh, it was an interesting session so uh, it's uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be a lot of fun so if you have any questions uh, Give us a follow. Uh, you'll give me a follow on Twitch, and you can join us on the other uh, on the other mediums that we have uh, with uh, Stack Overflow, Discord, or GitHub. And uh, let us know what you think. And I'll uh, leave the page for the survey. There it is. There it is. A little bit at the end. Thanks, everyone, and have a great day, evening, or uh, or morning, depending on where you are. <laughs>